Welcome back. Uh, so we last week we laid the foundation on how you present cases before God. Because as we saw, Jesus has all authority. He has all the legal light to do things in heaven and on earth. And from there where he has the legal light, he tells us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he says, Lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of age. So that's our great commission. And what we are doing is advancing the influence of God in every, you know, every sphere. And so what he does us from being able to advance, then we saw in, in the book of Second Corinthians, right there in 13, 14, 15, Jesus says that, you know, he, he forgave us. He wiped out the hard writing requirement that was against us, that was contrary to us. We read in other places, his promises are yes and amen. And so if his promises are yes and amen, if his word cannot be able to fail, if we come before him in faith, you know, he says he will diligently reward us. And so why is it that so many are walking not in victory in many areas? And so that's what I was talking about, the legal light. And so with the, uh, understanding the legal light, it's not like, you know, like the court or the art, um, it, but it's, it's, you can borrow some concepts from there. What you need to do, because most people now end up asking me, so how do I do this? It's the same thing as every other prayer. If we use, uh, we added where we were using Philippians 4, 6, and 7, where it says, be anxious for nothing. But how can you live in this world and be anxious for nothing? Some people are anxious of COVID. Some people are anxious of sick, sickness. Some people are anxious of so many things. And so just sit there and, and ask yourself. The Bible says, do not worry about anything. Be anxious about nothing. You know, be like a bird that wakes up. It doesn't know what it's going to eat, but God the Father provides for it. And so if he's saying be anxious for nothing, then he, he, didn't, he didn't say that and then uh, that not to be true. Do you know that now could be one legal light because we understood Jesus has our authority. Once we are born from him, the authority flows through us um, but we also see people like Cyrus in the Old Testament, and the Bible says they did not good, know God. So sometimes he can give them authority to do things because he's looking to advance his kingdom. So he has authority. He knows how he distributes the authority depending on the assignment that he has on the face of the earth. And so once he gives us that authority to be able to accomplish what it is that we need to accomplish, the legal light to do things, the way we can lose that authority to the enemy and I'm telling you go back there in the book of numbers and 22 23 and uh, 24 and read about that whole uh, story of Balaam and Balak and you'll be able to understand this concept very clearly you have it but you also you also have to fight to get it so think of, think of me so that you can understand. So first we have to see what are the things that Jesus accomplished. And so when it, he said it is finished, we said one of them is that every curse that you can be able to see in the Bible, he has redeemed you from it. So that means that its effects have no value in you. The only way those curses can have an effect on you is if you have something that belongs to the enemy. And so if you, you return, if you ref, by, because if Colossians says, Jesus on his side, he has already forgiven you. Once uh, the book of Hebrews says, once he entered, he, once he went to the cross and he entered once and for all with his blood and he took it to the master seat, it was once and for all. It's not like every time we sin, Jesus has to take the blood. Every time we sin, Jesus has to take the blood. 
No, that's not the case. He took it once and for all. And so that means from his side, Jesus has already forgiven him. And so just to understand this concept, you have to look at salvation. So because most people, when it comes to salvation, they understand this concept perfectly well. When it comes to everything else in the Bible, then that's where the problem is. So when you go to somebody who does not know God, and, and you are telling them, if you believe in Jesus, you know, come to him. If you believe in him, you'll be saved. You don't tell them, if you believe, you know, you have to wait. No, you don't, you are not expecting Jesus to die on the cross anymore. No, you are telling him something. Jesus has already on his side provided you something. Now it is for you to, uh, you know, ac- appropriate it by faith. And so he's already provided salvation, appropriated by faith. And so it is the same thing because now people will ask, if his promises are yes and amen, why are they not just happening to me? And so, no, we have to appropriate it by faith. That's why he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the reward of those who diligently seek him. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so these things actually in the spirit, you can actually, uh, you know, the things that are, are not real are more, the things that are not are more real than the things that are. So that means that in the spirit, this salvation has already been provided. For that salvation to manifest in somebody who, who, is, who doesn't know God, then that means they have to appropriate it by faith. So that part we understand. The same thing with everything else. Most people spend their time saying, God, it's you who is refusing. Actually, when they pray for somebody and the person does not make it, Most of the people now sit on the judgment seat and accuse Jesus whose throne, you know, God's throne, I keep telling you, is righteousness and justice. I want you to just meditate on that. And so if God's throne is righteousness and justice, that's where he's just. So basically he's just. And so if God is just, then that means that you can come to him and ask for something that Jesus already provided and he's a just God and for no apparent reason fail to appropriate it inside of you. He's already said he's given it. It's like now saying that, okay, salvation has, Jesus died for, all my, all, for the whole world. He didn't die for some of us. He died for the whole world. And then now you tell someone, you know, if you go to Jesus and you ask him to come into your life and save you, and, you know, you be born again, then he, he's, it's, it's, a, it's a 50-50 chance. He can do it or he can do it. And so that's how we treat every... I want you to take time to, with this because that's how we treat every other promise. We don't treat it like salvation. You don't witness to somebody and tell them it's a 50-50 chance. No, you, you start praying for them because the, it, it's the God of this world that has brided their mind. And you start praying for them because the Bible says they can't hear unless somebody tells them. So you pray for them that somebody will start going, that somehow somebody would start going to tell them about, you, about Jesus. And you pray for them. And so as you are praying, it, 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 they might read a book and, and the, 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 the light of God comes upon them. They might meet someone in a place where they never expected to meet a Christian and that person might tell them about God. But I'm telling you, there's no way you pray for salvation the same way you pray for healing, the same way you pray for peace, the same way you pray for this, you know, COVID, uh, the, you know, any sickness to live 
before this plague to live. There is no other place. The only place people, the, the only place people pray the way God actually would have expected us to understand the whole concept is salvation. So you are praying, you are, you are coming against every hindrance of the devil. And so once you come against that, then that means, uh, then you ask God to draw them. And then they, maybe they, uh, some of them will come to the knowledge of God. So take healing now and go to the same concept. When Jesus took the bread on the mercy seat, you know, by his stripes who were healed. And so when he took that bread on the mercy seat, every portion of sickness, because remember, sickness came as a result of the curse, as a result of us sinning against God. And so when Jesus took that bread on the mercy seat, what happens is now there is no more sickness is not supposed to be here. The legal light for sickness to operate can only be found if we do not appropriate what it is that he has given. So look at it like that. Some people still are going to go to hell. But is it that Jesus did not provide for their salvation? No, it is because they did not believe in what Jesus did. People will be judged in hell for not believing the finished work of Jesus Christ. And so it is the same thing. People will, people die. Uh, so let's say you are praying for somebody for healing. When you are praying for them and you can't see the healing, don't blame God. So the first thing you have to settle on the inside of you is that whatever Jesus could have done to be able to see the manifestation of the healing, he has already done it. That's the part. When you are praying, where you feel like, you know, like sometimes you wake up, you don't feel like you're a child of God. You have to settle. Whatever God has called me, I am a child of God, and I'm not going to go. And then now to appropriate that, you, do, you appropriate it by faith. So you have to settle. It is not God who caused that person that you are praying for to die. It is something gave it the legal light, or maybe that person's time on the earth was, God, was done. But we, you, it's not God. It's not on God's side. It is on the other side. So what is, because remember, God is just. He has justice. Even if he said in the book of Numbers 23, he will now not, he cannot, once he blesses uh, the, the children of Israel, he cannot take away the blessing when they sinned against him. He didn't take away the blessing, but they still died. He didn't take away their protection. It is their actions that took away the protection. So now, let's say you have a sickness right now. You have a form of sickness. I'm just, the Bible says pray with all kinds of prayer. And so now I want to challenge you. Instead of you just going and saying, God, heal me, heal me, heal me. You just say to God, for on the healing side, from your side, I am healed. Because it's on earth as it is in heaven. There is no sickness in heaven, so there is no sickness on the earth. And so if there is no sickness on the earth, and I'm seeing sickness in my body, then what is giving the sickness the legal light? So that's where we now come to the petitions. The best way I could advise you to do this is spend time, even if it's a day or two. Because sometimes, like where we are saying, keep your mind stayed on God. God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him because you trust in him. So you have to spend time not just in prayer, but also in the word where you are building. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so you are building yourself with the faith of God. You know, you are spending time with the word. Um, I'm telling you, sometimes do drastic things. Shut down everything else. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in the word. Spend time in this place where you are just so connected with God. You know, it's like you shut down the outside world and spend time just listening to God. Spend time. If you have a prayer language, that would be the best thing. I was just remembering today how this one time I wanted to pray and 
I just took three days. And just like you go to work, I would start to pray at eight and then co pray continuously and nonstop up to four. And then the next morning I wake up, I pray. And then the next morning I wake up, I pray. Like I did that for three days. And I'm telling you that the, it's like we, because of that, there's so many, uh, so many things that broke through in my life during that, that time as I was praying. And then after that, then it's meditating on the word because it says if you meditate on the word, you will prosper. Most people keep spend their time expecting other people to come and speak to them. They don't take the Bible themselves and lead. You have, uh, it's like expecting other people, the food that other people feed you cannot be enough for you. You have to eat yourself. Yes, you eat from other people feeding you, but I'm telling you, you have to take that plate and start preparing your own and start eating. How desperately do you want to fight for this that God has given you? And so if he has given you and it is not manifesting now, that's where you go. You go before God. So the how I was telling you how you go. Spend time in the presence of God. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in worship. Be able to enter that gate. You know, it can, It says, you know, we come to, to the Holy of Holies. So just think of it as the Old, uh, the, the old Testament tabernacle, sable, where you are entering into the outer court, and then you are entering into the, whole, uh, the holy place. And then you don't want a petition in the outer outer court. You don't want a petition in the holy place. You want a petition when you get to the most holy place. And so once you go into the most holy place, then from there, then you can be able to sit there and be able now to present your petition. And so when it comes now to presenting your petition in that place, where you are in the most holy place, then how do you do it? So if it is something like healing, what you do is you go to the Bible and you look at the promises. You can even be confessing with the Holy Spirit. And so in this sickness right now, so whatever the sickness, because it, it says, it, it go, remember where we started in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, be anxious about nothing. So that's your first assignment. Because when you're anxious, when you are worried at the doctor's report, already you are opening the door for the enemy to have the legal light. Because the kingdom of God does not operate where there's anxiety. Remember, we only have two choices. There is no gray. You are either operating, whatever you are doing, you are either opening the door for the kingdom of the enemy, giving it the legal light, or you are opening the, the, you are accessing what has already been provided in the kingdom of God through his, remember the foundation of it is love, and then now from there, that's where you are operating. And so now from there where you are operating, or understanding that on God's side, everything that you need for life and godliness he has already provided. It is not going to be provided. It is already done. So healing, I'm telling you again, on others it is heaven. Healing in heaven has already been done. It's already provided. So if it is not manifesting in your life, what's the problem? So that's the question that you need to ask. If it's not manifesting, what's going on? So now you come here. So first, don't, it's like there's many ways we pray, but I'm, so I'm giving you just one way of prayer. So in this one way of prayer, it's where you refuse to worry about that. You say, this is a report from the doctor. This is the report from the word. And so just like you get the report from the doctor, most people have more faith in the report from the doctor than the report that is from the word. So that means you have to shift that. Which report is more, the report from the doctor or from the word? So you shift that. And so once you shift that where you say the word is way much higher than, you know, he, God has exalted his word above his name. And so that's where you exalt the word above God's name. And then now you, you, you diminish this report according to the truth of God. Because you are coming with, it's like a, a truth, but you are coming with greater truth. It's, this, is, this is true. This report is 
is true, but there's a greater truth that overshadows that truth. Because it says the things in the spirit are more real. So in the spirit, if you belong to the kingdom of God, there is no sickness in the kingdom. That's the greater truth. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the spirit of sin and death. And so sickness is a, as a spirit of sin and death. So then you take scriptures, just use like 1 Corinthians 2.24. You go with that scripture, First Corinthians 2, and you stand on it. And then you go to other scriptures like Psalms 103, 1 through 4. You stand on, on those scriptures where God says he heals all your diseases. You go to second, uh, uh, that, that John 2. Beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health even as you so prosper. Galatians 8, 11. And so you are standing on this scripture. He, God will give life to your mortal body. And so he, he, he will he will give life, so you are expecting that life. He's the resurrection and the life. And he's the, you know, sometimes you need a miracle, not just the healing. And so you are expecting God. He has already, remember on God's side, he foresaw that. And he's not going to be going on the cross. He entered once and for all when he died. So he's already provided for every miracle you'll ever need to walk in victory. So you can choose to walk defeated or you can choose, I'm going to take a stand. Last week, we were praying uh, on Friday last week. We, even tonight, we are going to join prayers. Um, uh, so we are going to, to be in prayers, but we are praying. And I saw this, uh, like the army of God going up, uphill. And they were going uphill. They looked like the enemy had come and everybody was running away. But they were not running away. They were looking for a higher ground that was fortified so that they can take their stand. Because that is the place when, where they were taking their stand. It's where Psalms 18 talks about, you know, Jesus being the, the, the fortress. And so that's where he's the fortress. And so if Jesus is the fortress, that's where we are taking our stand. And so when we take our stand with Jesus as our fortress, it is where we stop running. So just see with me that picture. I know we've seen it a lot where this enemy is coming and, 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 and that people are running away. But this time I, I saw it more like, uh, like uh, uh, there's a strategy. I need to look for it in the Bible where uh, the, peop the people had a strategy where they wanted to draw people out of the city out of the city. And so what they did is they came and then the enemy thought, the, and now, the, uh, you know, when, they, when the enemy was in the city and started approaching them, the people acted as if uh, they are running away. Uh, and so the enemy thought, oh, we got them. Look at them. They are running away. And so once they ran, they, they didn't know there was another, uh, another camp of the, of the people that they were fighting. And those people now came and they burned all the city. Like they came from behind. These people are running. These ones are burning. And so as they are chasing them, they realize, oh, no, they can't go back. The places of their strongholds have been destroyed. And so what these people now that were running did is they took a stand. They took a stand and they said, enough is enough. I'm not going to learn from this thing anymore. I'm going to take my stand. And remember, when you take a stand, you are not taking a stand as you by yourself. We are fighting a battle that has already been won. We are taking a stand. How would you like that? Fighting a battle that you already know that you're going to be victorious. That's the best strategy ever. And then how would you like to know that the way that you are fighting the battle, you know, right now, like now if you watch some of, of, of the movies or stuff, you will see where they have the satellites, like somebody is driving in the city, but they are not going through traffic because they can be guided by the satellite person and say, take this route, take this route. It is the same thing. We have our satellite, Holy Spirit. He is above there seeing every move that you need to take. He's telling you turn light. And so if we just follow him, 
and listen to that voice. When it says turn right, you turn right. You don't ask why, you turn right. When it says go left, you go left. And so that's how we are going to be victorious. So then I want to challenge you. When are you going to take a stand? First, you need to depend for putting God on the judgment seat. I know it is easier said than done. Most people think I didn't put God on judgment seat. But I'm telling you, when you prayed and you didn't see the answer at the time that you expected, then you were not tenacious enough to wait, and so hope deferred came. And so because that hope deferred, it doesn't come like at once. No, it just comes slowly by slowly. And so some of you have, it's like the fire that was in you to be able to pursue things by faith. And sometimes you are able to stand until you saw that thing turn around. It's like that is dying away. Ask God, take a stand. All I tell you is take a stand. And once you take your stand, you say, yes, I'm going to take a stand and be able to fight these things. I'm going to take a stand and be able to see victory in this area. And so that's what I want to encourage you in. So what areas are you going to take a stand? We say the first area where you take a stand is on the righteousness of God. Because if you don't feel righteous or you don't feel like you're in basically your identity, you don't feel like a son, you don't feel like God loves you. And so most of the time you're wondering, is he going to back me up? So you need to cast out those lies that says that God is withholding back uh, on you and you are not operating in his kingdom of love and he does not love you. And so you have to settle like John that you are the disciple that Jesus is loved. And then now from there, then now what about sickness? The same thing, you take a stand. You take a stand on that sickness and say, if Jesus has already healed me, then you start speaking. You say, speak to your mountain. So stop telling your mountain about God. Tell your mountain about your God. And so call it by name. You swelling on my leg, you blister, you, you whatever it is, arthritis, diabetes, whatever the name they have given you. There's a name that is greater than you and has already defeated you. There's blood that has paid for you and you cannot be able to stand. And so what is that area? And you start taking your stand. Remember, be anxious for nothing. But in every, and start thanking God for seeing that swelling gone. Start thanking God for seeing that eyesight restored to 2020. Start thanking God for that tumor that being gone. Start thanking God for your brain functioning and the memory of the righteous being blessed. Start thanking God in advance. Be, present your petitions. And so you bring that case before God. We are still going to continue with this next time. And so God bless you. But I'm telling you, you have to take a stand.